Hey all, Mason Meninga here. There's one thing I wish Christians knew about deconstruction. It isn't that being LGBTQ isn't a sin. It isn't that hell isn't real. It isn't even that Skillet actually sucks. It's that people who deconstruct their faith were actually real Christians. I often hear from conservative Christians that when people deconstruct their faith, that they were just never real Christians. But people don't deconstruct their faith because they were never real Christians. We deconstruct our faith because we were the most Christian of Christians. So today, I'll be talking about why people who deconstruct their faith were the most Christian of Christians. Before we jump in, be sure to like and subscribe and turn on notifications and let me know what you think about the video in the comments. Also, these videos take a lot of time and energy to make. So if you like my content, be sure to support me on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Mason Meninga. And if you enjoy my Twitter account, you can get a shirt or sticker of your favorite tweet of mine at masonmeninga.com forward slash store. Sometimes people who deconstruct ask me what I wish I could convince conservative Christians of. Many times they think I would want to convince them that being LGBTQ isn't a sin or that hell isn't real. While I would like to convince conservative Christians about those things, I doubt it would be likely. It's hard to convince people who believe the earth is 6,000 years old much of anything. But there is one thing I think many of them could possibly be convinced of, and I wish they accepted. So if you are a conservative Christian watching this video, or if you have deconstructed or are deconstructing right now and have doubts about whether you are ever a real Christian, I want you to know that people who deconstruct their faith were actually real Christians. One of the arguments I hear from conservative Christians, especially online, about people who deconstruct their faith is that they were never real Christians in the first place. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Those of us who deconstructed our faith, especially those of us who grew up in evangelicalism, were told that there is one thing you must do to become a Christian. You must ask Jesus to come into your heart and give your life to him. Usually this is done by praying what is known as the sinner's prayer. Which, by the way, like the word homosexuality before 1946, isn't found anywhere in the Bible. I have met thousands of people who have deconstructed over the past number of years. And every single one of us at least once prayed for Jesus to come into our hearts and to give our lives to him. The very thing that we were told that we must do to become Christian is the very thing every person who is now deconstructed once did. But then we found out that asking Jesus to come into our heart and giving our lives to him weren't the only things we had to do to be a Christian. We then found out we had to produce good fruit to prove our Christian faith to others. One of the good fruits we were told was reading our Bible frequently, even every day. Those of us who deconstructed read our Bibles very frequently. I still remember getting my first Bible when I was 10 years old. And I remember reading my entire Bible in one year when I was in high school. Shout out to the people who read the entire Bible before they had their first kiss. Another good fruit we were told was that we needed to believe the right theology. Those of us who deconstructed were the creationists. And we knew why Calvinism or Arminianism was right and why we believed homosexuality was a sin. Another good fruit we were told was to attend church. Again, those of us who deconstructed not only attended church on Sundays, but we attended youth group as well. Some of us even carried a bunch of folding chairs at once to impress girls because of how often we attended youth group. Another good fruit we were told was remaining sexually pure until marriage. Those of us who deconstructed attempted not to have sex until marriage so that the wedding night could be special for like 10 seconds. And even many people who deconstructed after they were married did in fact not have sex until marriage. Another good fruit we were told was not to be influenced by anything that was secular. Those of us who deconstructed actively only watched Christian movies, listened to Christian music, and avoided all things that were considered secular. And that is why many of us still awkwardly nod our heads like we understand Harry Potter references. Those of us who deconstructed our faith were warned about lukewarm Christians who didn't take their faith seriously. They were the ones who claimed they were Christian, but didn't walk the walk. The lukewarm Christians were the ones who only occasionally read the Bible and attended church. They were the ones who fooled around with their boyfriends and girlfriends. And they certainly listened to that godless lady Gaga, because she's Catholic, not because she's an atheist. These lukewarm Christians may or may not have remained Christian, but they certainly did not deconstruct, because they never constructed much of a Christian faith to begin with. The very reason why those of us who could even deconstruct our faith to begin with is because we once constructed a strong faith. We were the ones who asked Jesus into our heart every time there was an altar call. We knew all the differences between young earth creationism and old earth creationism. We were the ones who read our Bibles, had the right theology, attended church, remained sexually pure, and avoided all things secular. 
We were the ones who constructed a strong faith, until one day we realized it was all an illusion. I still remember my senior year of high school and figuring out the couple in Song of Songs who had sex weren't married at the beginning of the book. It felt like all I had been told about sexual purity was a lie. There are countless stories like this from those of us who deconstructed our faith. We didn't deconstruct because we were lukewarm or fake Christians. We deconstructed because we had constructed a strong faith and then realized what we had been given was all an illusion. And then we later found out that many leaders in the church didn't actually believe and do any of the things that they told us to believe and do. While those of us who deconstructed our faith are often told we were never real Christians, there are the Jerry Falwell Juniors of the world who explicitly admit they were the fake Christians that those of us who deconstructed are often accused of having been. While those of us who deconstructed prayed for Jesus to come into our hearts, read our Bibles, attended church, didn't have sex until marriage, and avoided all things secular, many of the leaders of our churches rarely read their Bibles, were not sexually pure with their wives, and some never believed any of what they told us to believe. After multiple controversies that ended with Jerry Falwell Jr. resigning as president of Liberty University, he revealed in a Vanity Fair article that he never believed any of the Christian beliefs he claimed. While students at Liberty have been kicked out of school for drinking, having sex, or being LGBTQ, Falwell Jr. claimed he never believed any of it anyway. Christian leaders like Jerry Falwell Jr. prove that we didn't deconstruct because we were fake Christians. Most people don't deconstruct their faith because the church didn't teach them about Jesus, but because the church didn't live like Jesus. We found out that all we had been told was an illusion, and we started to break down and learn what was true and what was a lie about Christianity. It reminds me when Caitlin Stout once said, Folks who deconstruct evangelicalism aren't dropouts, they're graduates. We graduated evangelicalism. That is why we deconstruct, not because we were never real Christians. So if you are a conservative Christian and you're still watching this, and props to you for making it this far, you can believe those of us who deconstructed are wrong about not believing homosexuality is a sin or that hell is real. You shouldn't, but you can. But what I pray is that you realize that those of us who deconstructed were real Christians. All of the things you may think make someone a real Christian, we believed and did those very things. We deconstructed precisely because we were real Christians, not because we were fake Christians. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and also tell me what you thought about it in the comments. This video is brought to you by my Patreon producers. If you'd like to become a Patreon producer, you can find more at patreon.com forward slash Mason Meninga.